Hi, thanks for visiting Crypto White Paper Recordings. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about the latest white paper recording upload. Let us know if you have any suggestions or requests by leaving a comment below. And if you'd like to support this channel, please scroll down for more information. Eden Chain, Programmable Economy Platform, dated March 19, 2018, version 1.1. Introduction, Programmable Economy. The internet, smartphones, big data, cloud, and artificial intelligence technologies have had a major impact on the way in which we live. Since technologies such as smartphones have become a daily part of our lives, they have become indispensable. Similarly, blockchain technology will soon become deeply embedded in our lives and dramatically change the way we interact with technology. The programmable economy is born when the blockchain and the economic system meet. Programmable economy is a new economic system that capitalizes intangible and tangible values with blockchain technology and freely trades through the internet without a middleman. In the existing system, the middleman provides services to buyers and sellers so as to make transactions safe and fast, and the middleman is compensated for it. In such an economic system, the general public cannot participate in the network, so the middleman monopolizes the profits from such trades. In our programmable economy, the buyers and sellers are connected directly with each other, which means that there is no middleman. The cost is lowered and it is made simpler than the existing transaction process. In addition, participants of the network receive corresponding revenues. In the programmable economy, you can use blockchain technology to tokenize all types of assets, tangible and intangible, register them on a blockchain and secure their ownership, trade tokens with others and automate trade by using an IoT service. Tokenization Tokenization is the process of converting certain types of assets into blockchain tokens, Cameron Huff ND. In the world we live, there are all kinds of assets, such as stocks, real estate, rice, automobiles and gold, and people buy and sell them for their own purposes. As technology has developed, different types of assets have begun to emerge, such as copyrights, insurance policies and derivatives, and have a tradable value when certain conditions are met. With blockchain technology, existing assets can be replaced with blockchain tokens and their ownership can be registered, and the necessary conditions can be specified as a smart contract according to the characteristics of the asset. It is also possible to create new assets by combining them with other assets. Assetization is the process of assigning ownership to intangibles, such as game items, credit card points, or even one's own influence on social media platforms, such as SNS. Smart contracts. Nick Sabo explained the smart contracts as follows. Quote, A set of promises, specified in digital form, including protocols within which the parties perform on these promises, end quote. Sabo Smart Contracts, Building Blocks for Digital Market, 1996. In short, it refers to an automated trade agreement that automatically runs without human intervention if the conditions specified in the contracts are programmed. Alliance 2016 described Sabo's concept of smart contracts as four elements, model of a smart contract, automation, data processing protocol and software code. Furthermore, such smart contract was composed of six steps in total. Number one, identify agreement. Two, set conditions. Three, code the business logic. Four, encrypt and blockchain technology. Five, execution and processing. Six, network updates. Morabito 2017 divided smart contracts into two types one, deterministic, and two, non-deterministic. One, a deterministic smart contract is a type that does not have any data from the outside in its execution, while two, non-deterministic smart contract is a form that requires external data in its execution. Non-deterministic smart contracts are vulnerable to security compared to deterministic smart contracts with no need for external data because they need to retrieve data from external systems rather than from blockchain networks. Non-deterministic smart contracts, however, can
can be integrated with external systems to create various types of smart contracts and automation implemented, a very important element of smart contracts. Bitcoin Smart Contract Bitcoin provides a programming language named Script. Script is a bytecode stack-based language similar to Forth, and it is designed as Turing Incomplete, which intentionally does not support loop or recursion to ensure the execution of script programs without risk of hacking. Script supports various functions such as stack manipulation, string manipulation, bitwise manipulation, and basic cryptographic. However, script is not good at availability because it is inherently limited in its use. The most typical is that the maximum size of a script must be 10,000 bytes due to the limitation of Bitcoin's block size, and the number of available opcodes is limited to 201. Ethereum Smart Contract Ethereum supports a Turing complete language, and it uses loop and recursion, which is a more flexible implementation than Bitcoin script language. Script prohibits loop and recursion in order to deliberately delay the execution of the program or prevent it from taking a long time. Ethereum solved this problem by introducing the concept of GAS. GAS can be understood as a kind of royalty fee concept by using Ether encryption to execute the smart contract. Each time you execute calculations in an Ethereum smart contract, it runs in a way that subtracts a certain amount from the GAS paid in advance so you cannot deliberately delay the execution or repeat the calculation indefinitely. The interesting feature of the Ether Smart Context language is that it has the reactive property, so smart contract programs cannot be executed by themselves and can be executed by other transactions. It is designed to have the reactive characteristic intentionally to avoid a DOS attack. Smart contracts written in languages supported by Ethereum run on the Ethereum Virtual Machine, EVM. EVMs that run smart contracts in a non-secure environment where anyone can create and register smart contracts in a publicly permissive blockchain runs quarantined in a redundant network environment, and when problems arise when running a smart contract, roll back to the state before execution and do not return gas already used. NXT Smart Contract NXT adopted POS, Proof of Stake, Agreement Algorithm to secure performance and scalability with first-generation blockchain technology. It has been designed with client-server architecture and connects with internal and external systems using API. Unlike Bitcoin and Ethereum, NXT is prepared by using smart APIs provided by NXT. The NXT API provides the basic functions necessary for various fields such as fire, storage, messaging, and trading. Therefore, the general logic is written using a programming language such as JavaScript, Python, or Java in order to create an NXT smart contract, while the works such as input, delete, and update data in a block are done by using NXT API. The types and functions of smart contracts that can be created in NXT are more limited than other blockchain technologies supporting language-based smart contracts such as dummy, because they depend on the type and content of the APIs provided. Technical motivation. Smart contracts are a key element in the programmable economy. It is because tokenization is realized through smart contracts. It should defend against attacks, misuse, and tampering by hackers because they deal with transactions, and should be faster. Konstantinos Christidis, 2016, described smart contracts as a fully predictable autonomous actor available for reliable transaction processing. Mar Alabiad, 2017, categorized the issues that could be generated by smart contracts into four categories. One, codifying issue, two, security issue, three, privacy issue, and four, performance issue. The codifying issue explains having difficulty in creating a completely seamless smart contract while the security issue is related to attacks using bugs or weaknesses of the smart contract itself, and the performance is caused by the scalability of the blockchain executing the smart contract. Finally, the privacy issue describes the problems that arise as the content of the smart contract is made public. There are some technical issues to be addressed in order for a smart contract to be used as a trusted autonomous actor. When these issues are solved, 
smart contracts can be used in various fields of the programmable economy as a true smart contract. Two technical issues. There are two major technical issues in the implementation of the programmable economy, throughput speed and security. Throughput speed is a matter of urgency. In current blockchain processing techniques, there are a lot of difficulties in using it in conjunction with actual services, since it may be vulnerable to hackers' attacks over the internet with full exposure. Performance and scalability. One of the most discussed technical issues in Bitcoin and Ethereum's blockchain technology is performance and scalability. According to Ursum 2017, Facebook can handle 157,000 requests per second and Ethereum can handle 13 transactions per second and 7 transactions per second in the case of a smart contracted token. In addition, performance and scalability are said to be the most important issues for the blockchain industry. Technical issues related to performance and scalability must be resolved in order for blockchain technology to be active and more important issues for smart contracts that require far more computations than traditional blockchain transactions. For example, if a smart contract is interfaced with an external system, the slow processing of the smart contract can become a bottleneck in the blockchain itself, degrade the performance and scalability of the overall system, seriously undermining system responsiveness will be ignored by users. As the blockchain is activated and the number of transactions dealt on the blockchain, as well as more applications of smart contracts will increase, the problem of performance and scalability might be more serious. No secured connectivity. Mark Flood Oliver, 2017, stated in his paper that it is important to understand that a financial network is an edge where vertices are connected and that connecting these edges is a smart contract. Different systems need methods to be connected with and means to make conditions into something well refined with execution. In order for smart contracts to fulfill this role and create more abundant application services and further realize a programmable economy, a connectivity characteristic that can interwork with external systems is required. For example, suppose that a cargo owner moves the cargo with lorry A to location B, and then you create a smart contract to pay for the GPS information attached to the lorry. In order for a smart contract to be implemented, GPS information attached to the freight car should be transmitted to the blockchain where the smart contract is stored at a predetermined time interval. As a result, the smart contract is executed and the freight car driver can receive the promised costs. In other words, an interlocking system that can be safely interlocked with an external system can be provided to the smart contract to provide various benefits promised by the original smart contract. Smart contracts must be able to work with a variety of external systems in order to process contracts automatically. An important point is that system interworking not only means interlocking with external systems, but also ensuring stability against interworking with external systems. Ethereum provides a way to allow Oracle to interoperate with external systems, but it does not guarantee the safety of data from external systems, Mar Alabi 2017. Secured connectivity protects against the attacks of various hackers that may occur in the interaction between smart contracts and external system and guarantees stability. Secured connectivity is an important technical issue that must be addressed for the scalability and automation of smart contracts, but it is not provided by blockchain technologies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Eden Chain Programmable Economy Platform Eden Chain is a programmable economy platform that provides high performance processing speeds that complement the above mentioned technical issues, is operated reliably, and is a blockchain technology capable of developing a variety of automated services based on smart contracts with reliable interoperability of external systems. The core technologies implementing programmable economy smart contracts have a greater technological and economic value than non-deterministic smart contracts that require off-chain integration rather than deterministic smart contracts that are operated only on-chain. Conventional blockchain technologies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum are unsafe because they are exposed to hacker attacks because they do not guarantee the trust of interworking with external systems required in non-deterministic smart contracts. 
Eden Chain uses the eBridge layer to retrieve data from multiple data sources when a non-deterministic smart contract is interfaced with an external system, encrypts the data, and uses the median voter theorem, NVT, securing trust and defending against hacker attacks. Performance is a vital technical issue that is essential to the implementation of smart contracts. Eden Chain combines namespace with Merkle Tree, isolates transactions by namespace, and secures performance and scalability by constructing an execution system capable of parallel processing by namespace without processing one transaction at a time. Eden Chain supports Solidity, the most popular smart contract language at this time, including Diarium's EVM, because smart contracts are heavily used for sensitive services such as payment and settlement. Stable, reliable and reliable smart contract programming languages are more important than a new type of programming language that can be written easily. The emergence of a new type of language that takes a long time to be validated through testing and validation can be exposed to serious security vulnerabilities by hackers during the validation period, harming many people. Eden Chain constructs a blockchain using EVM and Solidity, which are verified and improved according to the do not reinvent the wheel principle. Since Eden Chain guarantees secured connectivity, you can realize a programmable economy by trading various blockchain-based assets on the internet. Tokenization of any type of assets can publicly prove ownership of the asset and can buy and sell them on an exchange or through P2P transactions. Eden Chain is a permissioned blockchain consisting of three layers, a distributed ledger layer, a validation layer, and a bridge layer. The distributed ledger layer is a place at which data used in the blockchain are separately stored and only data of transactions agreed to in the validation layer are processed. Distributed ledger data can be added through transactions. The validation layer is where a transaction is executed and verified and includes an EVM to run a smart contract. The validation layer has a transaction scheduling function, which has a significant impact on the performance and scalability of Eden Chain. The bridge layer is used to securely import data needed by an on-chain smart contract within the blockchain in cooperation with an off-chain. In the bridge layer, nodes naturally exist on-chain and off-chain, and an e-protocol using ECC to TC which is an encryption technique, is used for reliable communication between these nodes. Permissioned blockchain. A permissioned blockchain has evolved as an alternative to permissionless blockchain technology, which allows anyone to join a network, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. Permissioned blockchain technology must be authorized by a network administrator through an authentication process in order to participate in the network. Newly emerged blockchain technologies, such as Kadena, Tendermint and Chain adopted permissioned networks, and Hyperledger, a blockchain open source project for the Linux Foundation, also adopted the permissioned blockchain technology. Eden Chain is configured with a permissioned blockchain to run smart contracts quickly and efficiently in a trusted environment. In a permissionless blockchain network such as Ethereum, a smart contract runs on all nodes. This leads to two significant problems. The first is a performance issue. All smart contracts are stored in an EVM within a blockchain network and are executed according to conditions. If a million or a hundred million smart contracts exist in an Ethereum blockchain, serious performance problems may occur. From a position of miners, the miners will preferentially run smart contracts from which they can gain higher profit, that is, those with higher gas, so all smart contracts may not be executed. The second issue is efficiency. Although individually running smart contracts on all full nodes are based on the philosophy of the permissionless blockchain technology, individually running and validating the smart contracts on all of the nodes at all times is not considered efficient. Eden Chain is a permissioned blockchain that builds and runs a trustworthy environment for smart contract execution, secures safety, increases efficiency by using a certain number of nodes based on a namespace, and ensures 100% processing of all transactions. Block withholding. Loy Lu 2015 described a technique of fraud called block withholding and the risks of it. 
Block withholding is an attack technique that prevents a minor group who has found a solution to a problem in a POW consensus algorithm from receiving an incentive by not disclosing the answer to a mining pool. This technique can be used effectively when a minor group attacks another minor group. For example, if minor group A wants to attack a newly formed minor group B, minor group A selects a high-performance computer to penetrate into minor group B and makes a block withholding attack. Members of minor group B will not continue receiving incentives and thus their motivation to participate in the minor group will be weakened, which eventually leads to minor group B being disorganized. Block withholding attacks have been identified in the Bitcoin forum and in recent papers. Eden Chain operates a system fairly and stably with a permissioned blockchain. The purpose of Eden Chain is not to secure incentives through mining, but to create a programmable economy. Furthermore, as public confidence in Eden Chain is essential to do so, the system is transparently operated without any foul play. High availability. Since Eden Chain is a permissioned blockchain, consideration of service availability is needed. Because an Eden Chain server is operated by a small number of authorized agencies or companies, the server operation can be terminated when many hackers attack the servers or there is a disaster such as an earthquake or a fire, which means stopping an Eden Chain service. Because Eden Chain provides services to users and businesses across the globe, the system must be designed and operated to ensure that the service is continued at all times. Eden Chain must be able to guarantee high availability. Eden Chain utilizes cloud services to ensure high availability and operates an Eden Chain system with a multi data center pattern using a global DNS and a load balancer. The same system that provides the Eden Chain service is configured and operated in each service zone across major continents, such as Asia, North America, and Europe. It can provide a stable service despite attacks from hackers and natural disasters. A network between service zones deployed on each of the continents is composed of a VPN, Virtual Private Network. Cloud services provide connectivity between data centers across continents with high-speed dedicated lines, enabling fast networking and a data center to data center configuration. A multi-data center pattern is a pattern provided by the cloud service provider Amazon. It is used by many internet companies such as the Apache Foundation, Netflix, Cloud Foundry and Atlassian, furthermore recommended by MS Azure. Figure 8 shows a configuration of an operating environment of Eden Chain to which a multi-data center pattern and a VPN are applied. The operating environment receives a data request from outside a global DNS, plays the role of being connected to an appropriate service zone and secures availability by operating multiple global DNS servers. Endpoints of all services are designed and operated so as to be the global DNS. A load balancer delivers requests forwarded from the global DNS to Eden Chain servers to be processed. The load balancer not only plays a role of requesting routing, but also collects status information of each of the servers, which performs a more intelligent service operation than a round-robin service operation, relatively accurately figure out which server encounters a problem, and monitor a workload on each server to be used for capacity planning. Servers running Eden Chain are protected by an operational firewall. The operational firewall is a way to organize the Eden Chain servers into functional groups and apply a firewall policy to each of the organized functional groups. The operational firewall can functionally apply a well-abstracted security policy to a server so that a security policy can be flexibly designed, applied to each of the groups and managed integrally, and so that mistakes in setting work by users can be minimized. If a VPN in full mesh topology is built between service zones, performance and management problems will arise because each VPN configuration becomes more complicated as a service zone increases. The Eden Chain operating system can configure a VPN in a star topology so that a VPN router in a service zone can be connected with a VPN gateway without connecting to all of the service zones and enable VPN networking with the other service zones. POET, proof of elapsed time. 
The consensus algorithm plays an important role in the blockchain technique. There are two approaches. The first is Nakamoto consensus, which is a way to conduct a leader selection through a lottery process. When selected as a leader, you have the right to authenticate a previous block and create a new block. In the case of Bitcoin, a node that solves a hash puzzle first is selected as the leader. The second method uses BFT, Byzantine Fault Tolerance. This method does not select a leader and a final agreement is reached through several stages of voting. Eden Chain uses POET as a consensus algorithm. POET is a Nakamoto consensus method which uses a CPU command to select a leader randomly without using enormous energy to solve a hash problem like Bitcoin. POET provides an opportunity to become a leader with block generation authority for all nodes participating in a blockchain network with a probability similar to that used in other leader selection algorithms. POET is implemented in an SGX enclave so as to defend against hacker attacks and allow the leader selection process to proceed safely. At each node, POET uses a CPU command in the SGX enclave to obtain a wait time that follows an exponential distribution as a random number and select a node having the smallest wait time as the leader. POET is designed to follow the Poisson distribution, which is a kind of discrete probability distribution that follows the exponential distribution as follows and expresses how many times a certain number of events occur within a unit of time if the event is independent. DLL Distributed Ledger Layer The distributed ledger layer provides decentralized database functionality to Eden Chain and is used on the basis of the Linux Foundation's open source project Hyperledger. The DLL stores all data generated by the Eden Chain in a block. The data cannot be modified and can only be added. The DLL stores the data on a disk device and assumes that all of the stored data originated from a legitimate transaction. The DLL can find the necessary data from the outside by using a block ID or a transaction ID, and also provides a function of accessing information about all transactions included in the block. The DLL has a block cache module to minimize disk access. Block cache mainly stores currently used blocks in a memory, and when a requested block cannot be found, it reads the block from a disk and loads it into the memory. Depending on a frequency of use, it is possible to determine blocks that should be kept in the memory and those that should not, and thus a cache effect with optimal use of memory can be obtained. Software Connector Xi Wei Xu 2016 proposed a method of using blockchain technology as a kind of software connector. This view can improve quality of software architecture and enhance information transparency and traceability. In addition, it is also an important architectural design issue to determine which information is stored in the blockchain, on-chain, and which are stored off-chain, blockchain, as the data size stored in the blockchain is limited. Eden Chain designed the entire architecture in consideration of the distributed ledger layer, which stores information about various transactions that occur as a software connector. Any module can interwork with the distributed ledger layer only when interfaces defined in the software connector are followed. Software connectors are a kind of middleware component for interoperability among software modules, and they are essential elements in distributed environments that affect performance, reliability, and security. Hyperledger adopts a modular design, which makes it easy to use a distributed ledger function as a software connector in the whole architecture design because it can easily integrate functions provided according to a designer's purpose and needs into a system. EL, execution layer. EL is a layer that executes, processes, and verifies transactions, providing important functions for smart contracts and strength of Eden Chain. In order to update the data in Eden Chain's distributed ledger, transactions must be used. EL provides a TEE, trusted execution environment to provide an environment in which the transaction can be safely protected from data extortion or data forgery by hacker attacks. All transactions and key logic, including smart contracts, are executed in the TEE. The EL has Transaction Execution Scheduling, TES, which specifies how transactions are to be executed and on which node. TES is an important technical factor that affects performance 
and can show different processing performance with the same computing resources, depending on how transactions to be processed are managed and executed. TES includes an Ethereum EVM to run smart contracts written in Solidity. If a transaction being executed is a smart contract running on Ethereum such as Solidity, the EL executes the EVM. EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine. At present, Ethereum smart contracts have many users and are used in several blockchain projects to demonstrate the stability and functionality. Instead of developing a new language or system for smart contracts, Eden Chain uses the verified Ethereum's EVM and leverages the EVM in an Eden Chain permissioned blockchain to lower accessibility to Eden Chain smart contracts and create a variety of smart contracts. BL Bridge Layer BL is an important technical element that differentiates Eden Chain from other blockchains and guarantees zero knowledge trusted connectivity between on chain and off chain. In Ethereum, smart contracts can be interworked with external systems using Oracle but this does not guarantee trustworthiness of data from external sources. To realize a smart contract based programmable economy, it is necessary to secure trusted connectivity that enables the blockchain and external systems to securely interwork against hacker threats. Once trusted connectivity is secured, it is possible to expand functions by interworking with external systems and to automate various services. The BL is composed of one, an on-chain module for interworking with a smart contract, two, an off-chain module for interworking with an external system, and three, modules for interworking and networking between the on-chain and off-chain modules. The on-chain module serves as a gateway for responding to external data requests required by smart contracts. The off-chain module fetches data requested by on-chain module by accessing the actual external system verifies the data, selects a specific value, and transmits it to the on-chain module. Since the on-chain and off-chain modules are located in different networks, they configure a network on which they can securely exchange data against hackers' attacks and communicate. TES, Transaction Execution Scheduling, Transaction. An Eden Chain client can update data on the DL through transactions. Smart contract execution is also possible through the transactions. Eden Chain uses a batch and a block as units for grouping transactions. The transactions are gathered to form a batch and the batches form a block. In the EL, transactions are processed on a block by block basis. By grouping transactions into batches, dependency between transactions that can occur in a smart contract can be easily dealt with. Transactions in the same batch are assumed to be related, and if there is a problem in executing a certain transaction, other transactions can be invalidated. For example, if transaction A generated a transaction B and a transaction C, the transactions A, B and C are related, and the process is considered to be normally completed only when all of the transactions A, B and C are executed successfully. If the transactions A, B and C are grouped into batches, in the case of an error in the transactions A, B or C, all of the transactions included in the batch can be invalidated without considering the execution order or correlation between the transactions A, B and C, and thus dependency problems can be easily solved. Transaction Data Structure a transaction consists of a transaction body and a transaction header and contains the following data fields. Please see figure 9, transaction header, and figure 10, transaction body, both on page 25. Like other blockchain technologies, Eden Chain is designed to sign the transaction using a client's public key. The transaction body and the transaction header are configured as a pair. The dependency field of the transaction header specifies the transactions having a corresponding transaction and dependency. The dependency field indicates what transactions are involved when transactions are run in parallel, so transaction scheduling can be performed according to a relationship and order. A namespace plays the role of a kind of delimiter that indicates the nature of the transaction. In Eden Chain, anyone can create their own coin or blockchain system using smart contracts. For example, if Alice wants to create an Alice coin named after her, she can issue Alice coin using a supplied smart contract template. 
In order to trade Alice coin issued this way, a transaction must be generated. At this time, quote, Alice, close quote, is assigned to a namespace to indicate that the transaction is related to Alice coin. Eden Chain can collect and process Alice coin related transactions only by referencing the transaction header. Using this approach, performance and scalability can be improved by parallelizing transactions according to the namespace. Merkle Tree plus Namespace Merkle Tree was presented by Ralph Merkle in 1979 and is a tree data structure for authentication. All the leaf nodes have hash values of child nodes and the data is stored in non-leaf nodes. Merkle Tree is used in a variety of places such as IPFS, ZFS, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Apache Cassandra because it can efficiently store data and verify data integrity with less data. Since a root node of Merkle tree is updated every time a new node is added and a hash function is recursively applied to a hash value of the leaf nodes, a hash value of the root node is different even when only one value of a specific node is changed. This property enables data integrity to be verified for itself only by knowing a root node value, its own node value and a counterparty node value without all data. Namespace Eden Chain uses Radix Merkle tree to store a current state of a blockchain. Validator nodes that check conformity of blocks all have Radix Merkle tree. Radix Merkle tree displays some data with try using optimal space. If there is only one child node, it unites the nodes into one so it can effectively use memory. In a leaf node of Radix Merkle tree, a node address is included, and thus it is possible to identify a sibling, parent, and the like of the node by the node address value. A validator node examines a node address included in a transaction within a block and a batch to verify the transaction. Node address equals namespace plus node path. A namespace is a kind of identification value for identifying the kind of transaction and all transactions in Eden Chain must contain namespace information. Validator nodes can use the namespace information to group transactions in a block into related transactions. For example, for a transaction that contains simple transactional information, a namespace EDN is used, and for a smart contract XYZ, a namespace XYZ is used. The validator node can distinguish XYZ related transactions from EDN related transactions by simply checking a namespace contained in the transaction. Since EDN and XYZ are different kinds of transactions, there is no data consistency problem and they can be executed in parallel. It is no longer necessary to execute one transaction at a time due to data consistency issues such as existing Bitcoin or Ethereum. Transaction routing. Eden Chain runs in a TEE prepared from a namespace by using transaction routing. When a router receives an execution request for transactions submitted from a validator node, it searches the resource registry for an execution node to execute batches separated by the namespace and forwards the transactions to be processed by the execution node. In the resource registry, computing nodes for processing each namespace are recorded. If the router does not find the namespace in the resource registry, it transfers the transaction to a default execution node and executes it. TEE allocated by namespace can be independently run simultaneously without a global lock on the current state because there is no data consistency problem. By monitoring a workload allocated to the TEE in real time and constructing an appropriate number of execution nodes, it is possible to operate the blockchain with optimal computing resources according to the required computing power. eBridge An eBridge is a core technology of the BL and connects Eden Chain with an external system, i.e. an on-chain and off-chain software bridge. Data moving within a blockchain can secure security by using technologies such as a consensus algorithm and encrypted messaging. However, in case of an external system, the data cannot secure security because it can be attacked by hackers in various places. Therefore, when the on-chain module and the off-chain module are interworked, it is necessary to trust the external system and also the fact that the data transmitted from the external system is securely transmitted without any threat when it is linked with the on-chain module. 
A trust problem of an off-chain data source can be resolved if the external system is providing public services and has a reputation. For example, if Apple stock is needed in a smart contract and data is received from NASDAQ or Yahoo Finance Services, the provided data is reliable. A trust problem that can occur in the off-chain module when interworking with an external system can be largely classified into three issues. One, data source reliability, the reliability problem of whether the data provided by the external system is correct data should be solved. Two, reliable data transfer from a data source. Correct delivery of data means that data from a reliable data source is simply transmitted 100% without being subjected to hacking, and thus without any data corruption or fetching data from a wrong data source because a program that fetches data is attacked. Three, reliable data transfer from the off-chain module to the on-chain module. Reliable data transmitted from external systems should be transmitted to the on-chain module without being attacked. eBridge is a technology that solves these technical problems and provides trusted connectivity between the on-chain module and the off-chain module. eBridge is designed in such a way that there are software modules such as an Oracle server and Enclave located off-chain that are not in the blockchain and an executor located on-chain and an Oracle client interwork together to secure connectivity eBridge architecture. eBridge consists of an executor that executes transactions, an eOracle client forwarding external data access requests from the smart contract, an eOracle server processing requests from clients, and an SGX enclave, a TEE running eOracle server programs. Executor and eOracle client are located on-chain. eOracle server and SGX enclave are in off-chain. So e-protocol is used for secured connectivity to connect on-chain and off-chain module within the e-bridge. Executor. The executor is equipped with an EVM and is responsible for running a smart contract. The executor runs in an isolated environment to secure security and updates to the smart contract are not directly recorded on a DLT. Only data verified through a validator is allowed to access the DLT. Eden Chain is designed to run and validate smart contracts on each executor node by running n executor nodes. eOracle eOracle is a software module that provides functions for smart contracts to access external data. It consists of an eOracle client and an eOracle server. When the eOracle client requests external data, the eOracle server collects the data and sends it to the eOracle client. Since the eOracle client must be able to be called from a smart contract, the eOracle client is loaded and used in the smart contract. The eOracle client uses an e-protocol to request data required for the eOracle server. eOracle consists of several nodes and provides data verification method between these nodes and a consensus algorithm for final data selection. eOracle client the eOracle client is a special form of smart contract in which smart contracts provide external data access functionality. When the eOracle client requests external data access, the eOracle client passes parameters required for execution to the eOracle server, receives external data collected by the eOracle server, and delivers it to the smart contract. The eOracle client acts as a gateway between the smart contract and the eOracle server. eOracle server the eOracle server provides the actual functionality required to access the data requested by the eOracle client from the outside. An important feature of eOracle server is that it can execute external data access requests from eOracle client, collect external data, select appropriate values, and forward the values to the eOracle client. To enhance security, the eOracle server does not run an external data access related code within the eOracle server itself but runs the code in a separate space called an SGX enclave. The eOracle server consists of n nodes, and any external data is designed to fetch multiple pieces of data. If data from one eOracle server is imported, multiple eOracle servers may be run because data reliability or systemic problems may prevent proper importing of the data. SGX enclave an SGX enclave is Intel Software Guard Extension, SGX, enclave, which runs programs in a trusted environment to ensure security. 
The SGX Enclave protects data and programs running in the Enclave from hacker attacks by placing the programs in separate spaces, encrypting the data and making them unreachable by external processes. Encrypted data and code are safe because they are able to be decrypted only within the Enclave. Even if a hacker finds the data and code by directly accessing a memory with a side channel attack, it is impossible to decrypt them because there is no way to know a private key in the enclave. SGX Enclave protects programs and data from hacker attacks by placing programs running in the enclave in separate spaces, encrypting data and making them inaccessible to external processes. Encrypted data and code are safe to decrypt only within the enclave. And even if the hacker accesses the memory directly by accessing the memory with a side channel attack, it cannot decrypt it because it does not know the private key present in the enclave. According to Salvaraj 2016, the SGX enclave provides security at the CPU level to defend against hardware and software attacks on Intel. The memory used by the Enclave cannot be read or written regardless of the privilege level and CPU mode and cannot enter the Enclave environment with traditional calls, jumps, register manipulation or stack manipulation. The keys used for encryption in the Enclave are randomly changed. The key values are stored in the CPU, not in memory, and cannot be accessed from outside. Eden Chain runs eOracle server code on the SGX Enclave so you can safely protect your data and systems from hackers' software attacks and hardware attacks. eOracle Consensus Eden Chain runs multiple eOracle servers to secure trusted connectivity. Though external data have been imported while running on eOracle server, 100% correctness of the data cannot always be certain because there may be a system error or problem even when the data comes from a trusted data source. To avoid this problem, eOracle operates with 2n-1, called an eOracle pool. If multiple eOracle pools are used, one technical problem will be encountered. The problem is to determine which of several values provided by each eOracle server to use. The types of values that can be received from the eOracle server can be divided into two types, a discrete type value and a continuous type value. The discrete type value is a discontinuous value and refers to a value of type, such as true, false, man and woman, while the continuous type value refers to successive values such as 15.34432 and 1.0213. While discrete type values can have the same value on multiple eOracle servers, the value of continuous type values can vary depending on a data source and the nature of an external system, even when the data comes from a trusted data source. For example, if there are derivatives that are determined by Apple stock prices, an eOracle server acquires the Apple stock prices through various services such as NASDAQ and Yahoo Finance. If the value from NASDAQ is 175.01, and that from Yahoo Finance is 174.98, the eOracle server selects either one of the two values, 175.01 and 174.98, or combines these values to determine a final value to deliver to an eOracle client. eOracle Consensus is a technology that determines which of several values will ultimately be used in this situation. Shelling point. Shelling, 1960, announced the concept of the shelling point, in which people tend to behave naturally or in common sense to think for themselves rather than act randomly when doing something. Shelling presented, quote, at the information booth of the Grand Central Station at noon, end quote, in response to the question, quote, when and where should I meet a stranger in New York City if I have to meet the stranger tomorrow, end quote. He explained the reason why people are likely to choose this time and place is because they are traditionally the most used time and place for appointments. You can use the shelling point to create an agreement on external data in eOracle. The eOracle server is a separate node and accesses external data using parameters passed from a smart contract and receives results. eOracle servers have to exchange values and select a final value by itself without a centralized system. 
an important basic assumption is that there is no trust in the values submitted by each of the eOracle servers. Booter and V2014 suggested shelling coin as a solution to this. If the shelling coin is offered to those submitting the ultimately selected correct value as an incentive for people participating in a process for determining a value, then the participants will submit a value similar to the value that other people submit for receiving payment. As this process is repeated, values selected by the participants naturally approach an actual value. The shelling point uses common facts as a focal point to make a selection. The shelling point has to create common knowledge among participants, continuously present incentives to distinguish between right and wrong values, and lead the value that the majority of participants will select. However, it is difficult to apply the shelling point if the participants are constantly changing or if common information about the value they should choose is not created. eOracle Consensus by MBT Median Voter Theorem eOracle servers have two types of data, discrete type data and continuous type data, and these data types require different consensus algorithms. eOracle applies majority voting to discrete type data and MVT to continuous type data according to the data type. Majority voting. If the value that eOracle can have is limited to yes or no or true or false, Majority voting is performed to select the most common value of the eOracle server and confirm the value as the final value. Majority voting is a commonly used consensus algorithm that can be applied to discrete type data without difficulty. MVT MVT is a method applied when there is continuous type data. MVT is a theory in which the majority voting system will choose the result preferred by a median voter. In Black 1948, Duncan Black explained that the result chosen by the median voter in the majority voting system is a Nash equilibrium, and as a value moves away from the value of the median voter, no benefit can be gained. This means that if a decision other than the median voter's choice is made when a large number of participants try to determine a certain value with a majority system, there is no benefit. Here, Median voter refers to a person who thinks that the choice selected by half of the participants is the ideal choice. Voting theorem. In case of a common resource, VSSE, voting steady state equilibrium, of a resource utilization and growth rate is determined by the median voter. Kirill Borisov, 2010. A voter strives to maximize utility. When voting, in order to increase the value of VSSE, the number of people who want to increase the VSSE status value must exceed 50% of the total number of people. The value of VSSE is determined by the following equation. Please refer to page 37. The equilibrium growth rate is determined as follows. Please refer to equation on page 38. Therefore, the final equilibrium state value, VSSE, is determined by the median voter, and if a majority is not secured, the VSSE value cannot be changed. Because MVT consensus algorithms are implemented in the SGX enclave, hackers must hack more than half of the nodes in order to succeed in their attack, which requires considerable time and effort. Since MVT uses the median as the final selection value, it can be applied to continuous type data and thus can solve a problem for which majority voting is not suitable. In addition, because it does not require common information, unlike the shelling point, it can select the final value among the values submitted by eOracle servers without any prior information. And because it does not need to introduce a separate incentive system, it can be simply and clearly implemented. An eOracle server uses MVT to select the final value when selecting continuous type data. Threat model. Majority voting and MVT used by eOracle consensus are vulnerable to a 51% attack. If a hacker succeeds in taking over 51% of all eOracle servers exposed to the outside, the value submitted by the hijacked server will be the median and the eOracle server will send the modulated values to the eOracle client. In order to prevent such a risk, an eOracle consensus module runs programs in the SGX enclave to defend against hardware and software attacks and access external services using HTTPS. 
data sources that do not support HTTPS do not allow data the eOracle server access. eProtocol eProtocol is a protocol for communication between eOracle servers in an eOracle pool. The eOracle servers need to interwork with each other to access external data and make a consensus on collected data. Although the eOracle server cannot manipulate data or tamper with the program running on the SGX enclave, there is a possibility that a hacker could sneak a look at network packets, which must be prevented. An e-protocol is communication using threshold cryptography and it encrypts data. Threshold cryptography is an encryption protocol that allows K people in a group composed of N people to share special values to protect their data. Shoop, 2000. Threshold cryptography is a protocol with a cooperative property. Data necessary for decryption is shared among participants so that the encrypted data can be decrypted only when data of other participants is present as well as yours. Hannah Lee Howe, 2016. Threshold cryptography has the following characteristics. A trusted third party may not be required depending on the algorithm used. Participants smaller than K cannot decrypt the message. An attacker cannot use the acquired information to figure out the signatures of future messages. After signatures are created, participants do not have to create or mix signatures again. ECC, elliptic curve cryptography, hyphen TC, threshold cryptography. Nguyen, 2005, suggested a RSA threshold. This method does not require a trusted third party and does not leak important information during initial setup for secret sharing either. The RSA threshold improves safety by solving the problems of existing threshold cryptography. Ibrahim 2003 suggested ECC-TC. This method provides a similar level of security with keys which are smaller in size than those of the RSA threshold and thus it can finish operations faster and use less memory. ECC-TC does not share keys because both a public key and a private key exist as points on an elliptic curve. G. Padmathi B. 2012. The ECC-TC consists of three stages. 1. Key generation. 2. Encryption. And 3. Decryption. ECC-TC's encryption divides a message to be encrypted into N and encrypts each piece of the divided message. The main procedures for applying ECC-TC are described as follows. Please refer to page 40. The encrypted messages can be reconstructed using Shamir's method and decrypted using the private key to read the original message. The following figure illustrates the process of encrypting and decrypting. The e-protocol uses ECC-TC to encrypt messages used by an e-oracle. Attacker from the outside. If an external attacker accessed an e-protocol message, information that can be obtained is a public key Q and a random number K. These two pieces of information can also be obtained in a normal ECC and an attacker cannot obtain any other information. Even if an external attacker accessed the message and knew that the eOracle server uses ECCTC, the attacker can only obtain the public key Q and the random number K as before, and thus it is impossible to decrypt the message or identify a signature thereof. Attack from malicious participant. In one node participating in an eOracle session, it is possible to attempt to modulate or decrypt the message. However, such an attempt will also have little effect, since to decrypt a message in ECC to TC, it is necessary to know secret keys of nodes participating in the ECC to TC except your secret key. You cannot decrypt it with your secret key alone. Confidentiality on Eden Chain Confidentiality in a blockchain can be divided into three aspects. The first is confidentiality of a smart contract which ensures that only specific people see the content of the smart contract. The second is confidentiality of a transaction, which ensures that the content of the transaction is available only to the specific people, not everyone. The third is oracle confidentiality, which ensures that no data is exposed when requested by an external system. On account of the characteristics of philosophy and technology on the blockchain, 
it is difficult to secure the first and second confidentiality. In Eden Chain, a variety of smart contracts are implemented. If you allow an encrypted smart contract, you should have full confidence in the person or organization that submitted the smart contract and execute it, believing that the starting contract is safe. This is an important assumption that can greatly affect the overall security of Eden Chain, which cannot be guaranteed. Therefore, Eden Chain does not allow encrypted smart contracts. Encryption for transactions is an essential element in some financial transactions such as a specialised sealed auction. However, since Eden Chain smart contracts need to interwork with various external systems, if Eden Chain cannot provide records of past transactions or ownership when requested from the outside, utility of Eden Chain will decline and thus will not be accepted. Oracle confidentiality is an important security factor for interworking with various external systems by securing trusted connectivity using smart contracts. In order for smart contracts to be automated and conveniently and safely work with users, continuous interworking with external systems is required, and in this process, important information moves through a network. If a hacker is able to access this information, it may cause a margin of misuse and seriously undermine security. Confidentiality by SGX and Encrypted Protocol Confidentiality is ensured by using an SGX enclave and an encrypted protocol, and privacy is ensured so that the details of transaction and smart contract executed in Eden Chain cannot be seen by anyone. Confidentiality in SGX Enclave Confidentiality is secured by using SGX Enclave and Encrypted Protocol, and privacy is ensured so that no details of transactions and smart contracts executed in Eden Chain can be seen. All processes, such as eOracle Consensus, which access an external system from an eOracle server to import data and select one of the multiple pieces of data, are executed in the SGX Enclave. While the SGX enclave is running with limited access and data encryption, it cannot be understood by insiders such as system operators or hackers. In the SGX enclave, external data is imported using HTTPS. Because HTTPS uses a SSL certificate and encrypted communication, it reduces the risk of hacking as well as preventing an insider from knowing content of the data. Smart contracts support interworking with external systems that support HTTPS and do not allow unencrypted communication protocols. Since the SGX enclave does not store the data used for interworking with external systems in a permanent storage device such as a disk, it is deleted immediately after execution ends. Encrypted protocol Hackers have two possible attacks in terms of networking while eOracle is running. SGX Enclave Networking with External Systems and Networking between eOracle Servers Since communication between the SGX Enclave and External System uses HTTPS, data is encrypted and communication between eOracle Servers is encrypted communication using ECC-TC. Thus, it is not possible to decrypt or manipulate a message even if an attacker accesses the message. No Censorship all transactions and smart contracts executed in the Eden chain run on an EVM and the SGX enclave. Thus, the data used here cannot be controlled or accessed and censored. Eden chain is a permissioned blockchain, but as in any permissionless blockchain, it does not censor data and therefore provides an environment on which all transactions and smart contracts run equally and at 100%. Concluding Remarks Eden Chain is a blockchain technology that improves speed and security, which is a typical technical requirement for applying blockchain technology to programmable economics. Because of the data consistency problem, serial execution is not scalable. Increasing computing power to handle more transactions cannot speed up processing. Eden Chain uses namespace technology to tie transactions that have the same namespace to each other. Transactions belonging to different namespaces have no data integrity issues and can be executed in parallel at the same time. As the number increases, you can increase your processing speed by adding computing power, which is good for scalability. 
If you need faster processing, you can create each namespace computing zone that can process transactions by namespace to maintain optimal performance. If the blockchain is used in conjunction with an external service to deal with a large number of transactions, the risk of a subsequent hacking event increases. Conventional blockchain techniques focus on the security of the blockchain itself, so either external interlocked security is not provided. Eden Chain uses eOracle technology to effectively defend against hacker attacks in conjunction with external services. eOracle technology uses multiple data source ECC-TC and MVT technology. Because eOracle is implemented in SGX Enclave, it is very difficult to hack. In order to succeed in hacking, 51% of eOracle must attack server. With Eden Chain, you can easily use the blockchain technology and the coin in the business, stroke organization, stroke person who needs the coin. Please refer to page 46 onwards for a list of the references used for the Eden Chain technical paper.